Hello, and welcome to the Knitting Traditions Podcast. My name is Inga, and this is my little corner on the internet where I talk about my knitting. I'm back from the cabin, which I'm currently at with my father, brother, and Nelly, my little daughter. My dad's watching her right now, so I took the opportunity to quickly record a little podcast with what knitting I have to show you, because I did bring it all with me up here just in case um, the opportunity arose, and it did. So settle in with something nice to drink. I got some coffee. Sustenance to survive a little sleep. And I am wearing my Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter. I did modifications to my Nordiska. I don't remember them on top of my head and I didn't have time to prepare for this episode, so you can always go back and rummage through all of my episodes to see if you can find it. But I know for sure that I did a deeper v-neck than what was intended for my size. I probably did a bigger size instruction for how um, long to knit back and forth before joining because I wanted a deeper v-neck. I didn't like this look, which the original, um, the original uh, Nordiska has. I wanted a wider v-neck. Um, let's see, I can put it forward and there's my nursing. <laughs> but yeah, so I, fe I feel like it hits in a nice way. It does not show the straps, even though if it did, I wouldn't mind. Um, I also did modifications to the sleeves because I did no decreases. I just kept knitting straight. So I did have to play a bit with the chart because the chart has decreases in it. If I don't remember wrong, is that even words? Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I did zero decreases. So I just kept knitting straight. I did color work all the way down um, to my cuffs and then I did a two by two ribbing um <clears throat> so this is how my sleeve looks you can compare it to the original which is i think three quarter length and tapered um so very different very flowy and i prefer this look um i think on the bottom it is as per pattern if i'm not mistaken but i do think i made it longer uh I think in the pattern, the color work starts pretty soon after splitting for sleeves. And I did quite a few centimeters, um, so basically my hand from the underarm before starting the color work. Um, so it, it fits me, it hits like my widest part of my hips maybe slightly above that uh, and i knit this in hillesvog ask which is um it's a fingering sport weight maybe uh, i would have to look up but it's great for color work i knit this at quite a loose gauge so it does have some pillingness going on it's not too bad honestly it's really not too bad you can see like little little nips and nuts but not too bad and it feels really nice it is rustic yarn so it's not like ooh soft but i don't find it scratchy at all it has like that dry dry woolly feeling if that makes sense mm. so yeah that is what i am wearing today and I have one finished object to show you, um, but I also have one that my mom made for Nelly, and I finished it up for her. She knit the bums, the sweater, uh, in Isayer Eco Soft. Is that a base? It's it's really soft. Uh, this yarn was quite pricey but it feels amazing so I can highly recommend if you want something soft she did not put on the teddy bear bear embroidery that's supposed to be on the front um she left me to do that but I think I might just keep it plain 
Right now, um, I asked her if she could knit it quite long on the body and the sleeves, so it'll fit her like a dress first. And then maybe once she grows to be bigger and it'll fit more like a sweater, I might add the, the teddy bear later, but I just thought it looked really cute like this. And of course, she's not big enough to wear this yet. I think my mom did the one-year-old size, but she knits quite loosely. So with the length and everything, this is probably more like a two-year-old, but it will fit when it fits. And I finished another Lily dress for Nelly. Now this is supposed to be the two-year-old uh, size and I do think my gauge in the end does fit the two-year-olds and it has these really cute ruffles and it's a skirt and then it ties in the back so it's it's an apron dress um, this pattern I have from a book so I'm not sure if there is an English version on Ravelry but there are apron dress patterns on Ravelry which are similar to this and I will try to link that below and I knit this up in holes super soft in the color Scots Pine and I think it might just be my favorite color from holes super soft and I do think it's showing up how how heathered the color is it is really interesting and it just looks like the bottom of floor of a Scots pine forest. I received, um, or I did a advent exchange two years ago with um, some podcasters and I got some minis from Amy Palco and I knit up a water bottle, water bottle cover with it. And my favorite color out of all the ones that she sent was this Scots pine. And I kept the mini after finishing this. I mean, I kept all the minis, but I kept it thinking that I was going to order a cone of, of that yarn. And who found when they were looking at their cone stash? Because I have, I have cones on top of my yarn cabinet. And then there's some in the back that I don't see. And um, turns out I have, a, I have a cone of Scott's Pine. So... <laughs> I knit up this for her and I am really entertaining the idea of making one for myself. Um, this pattern really would not be hard to modify. You knit the, you knit the, this thing first. So I just use that as a gauge swatch for mine. And I think I knit this entire dress on the smaller needle size, I think three, 0.5 millimeter needles and I never went up just because I um, my gauge was slightly off so I just stayed on the smaller and I could just measure my gauge and then my waist and then figure out how many stitches I would need for me and then maybe make it longer and then you know do increases to do a skirt um, do the front panel you know really just play with my measurements and the gauge that I had for this and this yarn and we could have like a mommy and me matching and I could have a white shirt underneath I think that would be silly but also kind of cool so I am toying with it it would be a lot of knitting <laughs> but I love this color and I do think I would I would wear it honestly um yeah also apron dresses are a great thing i think for kids because they would have other items underneath so you wouldn't really have to worry too much about them being sensitive to the yarn that you use so i really like that um yes so that is the whole super soft apron dress it's called lily schule um i think it's just so cute She's going to be precious in this. She's quite a long baby, so it might even fit her before she's two year old. Pro, honestly, could fit her soon. <laughs> uh, and this skirt, I was knitting on this while I was in the labor and delivery room 
I had a really long um, time in that room and um, at the beginning I was knitting a few rounds just stuck in it and around like the crazy person that I am but it was nice to have something to do um, during those early moments and yes I have some whips to show you so I think in the last episode I showed that I had knit this pair of pants these are the first impressions pants by drops it's a free pattern on Ravelry I have a lot of free patterns from drop state for baby knits just because I find it really convenient to um, just have easy access to simple simple patterns um, and just to see through the pattern if it's something I would actually like to make. I'm a little bit lazy when it comes to baby knits and this has gotten so much use already so I wanted to highly recommend it to anyone who is knitting for a baby or a gift knit. Um, it's just ribbing, two by two ribbing. There's a 2.5 millimeter needles for the first three centimeters and then you use three millimeters for the rest. There are some increases here. You bind off, you do the legs. I've used it so much. It fits great. It's gonna grow with her and you can fold down the, the top. You can fold down the legs and it'll fit from an early age and then it will grow with the kid. And I found that when she kicks her socks off, if I put socks on her, uh, I can just uh, unfold the legs, which now fits her like this. If she kicks her socks off, I can just unfold it and then she has some woolly layer covering her little feet until I find the disappeared sock. So I cast on another one. I have some stash yarn. So this is um, a yarn that was gifted to me from Gone Specialistin. It's 100% Italian merino, so it's non soup wash and she already pooped through this and I washed it and it's completely clean and fine. I machine wash my knits on a wool program with wool soap. Uh, but I do have some soup wash yarns in my stash. This is a hand dyed 100% soup wash merino from a local yarn store to where my Thea's parents live. And it was on sale once and the color got to me. This is called Hustle, and the dyer's uh, label is uh, Strikesul, and it is just a beautiful autumnal color right up my alley, and Nelly has similar coloring to me and Matthias, so I cast on another pair for her. So this is the three month size, I think, and I cast on a 12 to 18 month size so because of the ribbing it doesn't really <laughs> look like a big difference but it is it stretches quite a lot and I will be knitting it uh, slightly longer than recommended just because then it will last longer because like I said you can just fold it down and I will also make your legs longer I have plenty of yarn oh there is also some German short rows in this so that is more of a fancy technique for a beginner um, but it's really not difficult so it, it is a great easy pattern and no elastic bands no fuzz minimal seaming I think only joining the crotch together is the only seaming you have to do so I'm currently on the body of this and I will soon start the increases and I will be making more of these pants in the future, for sure. I was also gifted a pair of very similar pants from a colleague of mine. I don't know if it's the first impression pants or one of the other ones because Drops has three ribbed baby pants on Ravelry that kind of look identical. Um, but I don't think it's exactly this one because the crotch on the one that I received from my colleague is in stockinette while this continues in ribbing. So that is a whip, which is mainly something that I knit on at night. After feeding her, she needs to be on my body for quite some time before I can put her down or she just wakes up again. So that's where I get in some of my 
mindless um, rib knitting. I also cast on another um, 3 a.m. rib knit. <laughs> I cast on a one by one ribbed hat, which I was going to make for me. This is some old stash yarn from Turkey, some Ghazal wool acrylic blend. I made a hat before um, and I really enjoy that hat. It's um, something that I'm not too fuzzy about and I also made one for gifts and I had two balls of this blue and I was going to make one for me and I didn't remember the needle size I used for the green one. I thought it was 5.5 so I cast on 64 stitches um, but it's it's tiny. I mean I could I could stretch it on but I am also toying with the idea of um, this being for Nelly and then I can take whatever I have left of the ball and the other ball and make a matching one for me on some bigger needles but we'll see I think um, I'll knit a little bit longer and try it on her head to see how it fits I mean it is quite stretchy so it might be too big I don't know it's going to have a folded brim and then I will use the um, I'm going to use the decreases for the crown that is that is from the watch cap hat from Pearl Soho because I just really enjoy the look of that so yeah the watch cap hat is a two by two rib but um, I'm just gonna make it work for for this so yeah that is a very chunky for me a very chunky whip that will be quickly done once I just decide what to do with it and then I finished one and a half of these beautiful squares these are the originally the Stella quilt cushion by Laura Penrose but I am making a blanket. I am doing a test knit for her, which is the Stella quilt blanket. And um, actually, I'm making two. So I am first knitting up with the stitch counts of the pillow. Uh, and I will be joining them together to make a blanket. But I am currently following the instructions of the blanket to kind of read through it and work through it. And... The blanket comes either that you can join as you go or you can knit squares and join later and that is what I will be doing just because it's more portable and um, I have made four now so I only brought one to the cabin to show but I have knitted in boucle yarn that was gifted from Knit Shop Italy um, some synthetic sparkly one and a beige one. This one I'm holding two strands together to get the same gauge. And I think the gauge that I'm getting is the Aran weight because it comes with DK and Aran in the pillow uh, instructions. For the blanket, the motifs uh, with that stitch count will be even bigger because it is supposed to, or at least the version that I'm be gonna be <laughs> doing, is going to use up 100 grams of a color and then there's the background colors which uses a bit more so i am i am going to be doing several single skeins from my stash either in dk or fingering held double and the first one that i'm going to start with is this beautiful yarn this is lore yeah, this is Lore in the color Ambitious, and it's a beautiful green. And I actually do have two balls of this yarn, so I might be able to make two motifs, or I just do one motif in this color, and then use the other skein for something else. And I have lots of other uh, colors in like earthy tones at home that will be going into the blanket. And uh, the background color, I went to the Rama factory before Christmas and I got some cones of their lamb's wool. And the lamb's wool is 
like a light fingering but if I hold it together then the weight and midrange should be about how is it I think I think I calculated that if I hold it together 100 gram is going to be around 230 or 240 meters so the same as the uh, many of the DK skeins that I have in my stash that I want to use for the blanket. Now I'm a little bit unsure if I should start with um, like the thicker DK yarns that I have to make sure that I hit gauge so I don't run out of yarn if that makes sense because some DK yarn skeins that I have have a few more meters than other ones. I have anything from 220 to 260 so it's like a bit of a range but I do want to be able to use up most of my stash so I think I should probably start with the thicker ones um, just to make sure that um, weight wise because I think how she does it in pattern is you you knit a square and you you weigh it uh, and you make sure that you have less than I think I will have to look into it but she explains in the pattern how to make sure that you are using the right amount of yarn per square so you use it up but you don't run out so I think I will start with the DK skeins that has the less meterage and then use that needle and stitch count from there and make a big big blanket but I wanted to finish the squares for this one first because I really like the look of this and I wanted to make one for Nelly and I might just um, use the um, the pillow pattern has a backing, uh, two different kinds. And there's one where you, you knit from a corner up and it covers the back. So that would hide all my messy ends and also this synthetic yarn does not really feel really nice against the skin. It's quite rough. So I am thinking I will either knit a backing for each square and then join them. Or I will make a giant backing for all four of them. And then just, I don't know, tuck it in as I go in a few places. So it doesn't, so you don't have two layers that have no connection in the center so that it's, it stays together. I haven't quite decided and that's why this has been put a little bit on the side burner for now but the front panels are done for a square blanket for her and I do still have a little bit of yarn this is what I'm going to run out of uh, first so I don't know if I will be able to squeeze out two more squares I highly doubt it if I wanted to add to the blanket, I would need at least two more squares because right now it's two by two and I can't have one more square. That wouldn't, that wouldn't add up. So I would need to make two more. So I, I don't know. I could try. And then if I just make one more, if I run out, then that'll, that's a pillow. That, that is something I could do. So yes, that is that. I also have made a little bit of progress on my Peated Whiskey cardigan, which I think is by Thea Coleman. I will put all the information down below because I did not have time to, to look into all the things that I wanted to talk about because this was a spur of the moment um, recording. <laughs> but yeah, I decided to start on my fourth ball of yarn so this is the um, peated whiskey cardigan i am working on it's blowing up i am working on the body and i have also already made the pockets so there will be there will be pockets here on the front panel sewn on later which can be used as a gauge swatch if you decide to knit this uh, that wasn't very clear in the pattern but I would recommend doing the pockets first as a gate swatch. Um, I had used up three skeins of yarn. I have 10 total, uh, but I saw that I still had quite a few centimeters to go before it even hit the short 
cardigan version length. So there's the short and the longer version and I was going to do the longer but I don't think I'll have enough yarn. We'll see. I am going to finish the fourth fold of yarn and see how many centimeters I have and then I might go on to do the sleeves because then I will have had the sleeves, the pockets and enough body to call it a body and see how much yarn I have left to decide if I want to go on to the the top part of the cardigan or if I want to knit more on the body before that. It all depends on how much yarn I have left. The yarn is the three ply yarn from McAusland Mill in this beautiful heathered brown colorway which is very interesting. It has some green, some red, some yellows to it. It's beautiful. Now I am using 4.5 millimeter needles for this and uh, that is quite a dense fabric like this has zero drape to it but that is what I wanted. I wanted a cardigan that will really stand the test of time and be like a workhouse cardigan and something that I don't have to be afraid of and also because it is so dense that means the pockets will also be able to hold things more sturdily so if that's even a word. So that's uh, the peated whiskey cardigan and it's beautiful and I have finally gotten to a point where I don't need to look at the charts because the most advanced motif which is in the front is now repeating itself so I can look at where the slopes kind of which direction they go in and based on that know where to place my stitches um, which is really nice and then I have some new whips but I can show you first what I have been working on so I brought this with me to um, the labor and delivery ward but I did not knit on it at all while there because well natural causes <laughs> But this is the Amy Slipover, which is a pattern by Sana Skarn from one of their booklets, Soft for Women, from last, last year sometime. Um, I'll see if I can find some, some links to where other people have said they've been able to find the English uh, booklet version but you might just have to ask your local yarn store if they could order it in but I do know people in the states and Canada have been able to get their hands on it I love this pattern this is the third time I'm making the Amy slipover I really enjoy the big ribbed ties on the sides that you kind of I have ends everywhere because I'm trying to maximize the yarn that I have instead of joining new balls I'm using all scraps. <laughs> uh, the big ties that you have on the sides and I'm currently working on the other side and then there's just the, the neckline left and I will use whatever yarn I have left over for the neckline and it will either be a short neckline or a long turtle floppy turtleneck because this this yarn is super drapey. I am using some cashmere silk from Pinsveen Design together with the cashmere tweed base which is 100% cashmere from the same store which is a store outside of Bergen in Norway which I was tipped about and I fell in love with both the yarn and colorways when I was there but it is quite pricey so I tried to find a pattern that didn't use too much and the Amy slipover was perfect. So I bought just the exact meterage that is intended for the pattern, which is using, I think, Sunday from Sunday Scar Sunday Sunday from Sunday Scarn with a silk mohair originally. So this is of course not the same yarn. Um I just broke into the silk mohair, so I had two of them, but they were not the exact same weight, so and this is the last I have the tweed and it does use quite a lot of yarn for the for the sides I mean these are quite a lot of fabric um, 
or the five centimeter thick ribbed band that goes quite far. But yeah, so I'm going to finish the other ribbed border and then whatever I have left will go into the pink line. And I think the, the fabric it's creating is just stunning. I'm excited to see how it holds up. Uh, it fits right into my wardrobe and I am really excited to have it. So that is something that I am currently knitting on because again, it's just ribbing, simple, mindless, easy to pick up, not as easy to pick up as these because there are two strands of yarn, but um, easy enough. Also, a modification that I've done to the pattern is that I've not gone down a needle size for the ribbing. I'm continuing using 3.75 millimeter needles, which is um, what I swatched with and I almost got gauge. I think my gauge is slightly bigger. So I did, I don't know, a few stitches less on the body just to save some yarn. Not a lot. I think maybe six stitches left, less on the front and back. Uh, but I am doing the same stitch count for the, for the border ribbing as in the pattern. I'm just, I just have not gone down a needle size, so the row length is growing a little bit faster. Um, and yeah, I also use them for the bottom of the body because I'm not a fan of a cinched in look. I want it to be straight and I'll see how much yarn I have left, but I'll probably go down the needle size for the neck part. That's usually how I am with most patterns. I will not go down a needle size for the cuffs of the sleeves and body, but I will do it for the neckline because there I do want it to cinch in. Okay, now I have three new whips. So um, Nellie has been wearing wool ever since she was born. It's great at regulating temperature and she really honestly seems a lot happier when she is in her wools rather than cotton. So I wanted to knit up a sweater for her for next fall and winter. So this is a pattern that is called Lucas Genser. Again, I'm sorry if it's not available in English. I have not had the time to check, but I will say that there are very similar patterns from Drops on Ravelry, which is a good alternative. Petite Knit also has some patterns for children which are very similar. It is a textured, all over textured sweater for a kid. And it's just knits and pearls except for this motif which has increases and decreases but other than that it is really just knitting and purling and i'm doing the one year old size and i had three balls of the drops tweed mix and i thought it was going to be enough but i think i'm going to run out it's not the yarn that was intended in the pattern. This one has a few, it has the same gauge specs on the ball band, but it's fewer meters. So I'm probably gonna run out. But if I do, I will just buy one more ball of this, but I am trying. So I have finished the, the body and I finished the first sleeve and I've done it to pattern. I didn't elongate it or anything. Um, but yeah, as you can see, I have a sleeve to go and this is all I have left of the third ball. So I'll probably end up losing yarn chicken with like this much to go, but that's okay. I can always, um, I have some other colors in this yarn. So if I do have to buy another ball, then I could use what's left after that to do some stripy project with um, with colors from the other yarns. Uh, yeah. So that is the Lucas Genser for Nelly. 
and a beautiful foresty tweety green. And it's really hard to get it to show up on screen. Um, I feel like the camera quality is not working really well with me today, but what can you do? I wanted to update. Who knows when the next time will be. And yes, speaking of uh, practical woolly knits, um, I have been using like little bibs on her for spit ups. And I found that the cotton ones, I have a lot of cotton ones that I have been gifted secondhand from friends and stuff. They get really cold um, with the spit ups. And then my parents, they got me some wool ones, um, some woolen bibs, and they are so much better. When she spit up, spits up on these, they don't get that cold feeling, and I find they dry a lot faster. So I was like, hmm, I have a lot of yarn, woolly yarn, maybe I can knit a bib. So I had a look on Ravelry. <laughs> That's all I used Ravelry for, looking for patterns. And I found several, several bib patterns. And I have saved a lot of them. And a lot of them are like pretty ones with lays and cables. Uh, but what I enjoyed the most was basically a garter shawl baby size. <laughs> so um, this is the simplest kind of shawl where you uh, cast on three stitches, knit six rows in garter, so garter tab, and then you pick up three stitches uh, along the long edge and the cast on edge, and then you knit back and forth in garter. Um, you increase after the first stitch and before the last stitch on every row, and on every second row you also do increases, uh, two increases in the center with like there's a middle stitch and you increase on each side of the middle stitch on every second row and it creates a little garter shawl and I measured it against another bib um, that I have of this shape for her so it's now big enough I will be using like little pressure buttons in the back and I am now toying with the idea of either just casting off, having it be a simple one, or do a pico edge, or knitting a border which is a little bit more lacy and fancy. So I'll keep you updated in the next episode. The yarn that I'm using is um, New Zealand Lamb's Wool from Gül, they're number three, and it's an undyed yarn, and I've used this for the Barely Bonnet for her, as well as the Augustine's circular lace blanket for her. So it's gone a long way. I think I had to only two skeins of this and it's gotten me the blanket, the bonnet, and now a bib and I will have more left. And I'm just really loving the natural heathery browns colors this year. Last and final cast on is something for me for those of you who are not interested in baby knits I am working on the badger and bloom sweater which is a pattern by Anna Wenzel and I wanted to knit this ever since I saw it on Anna Passe Trevino am I saying that wrong? I'm so sorry APT Atelier is her podcast she is lovely you should go check her out um, she knit this previously I think I think that's where I saw it and I decided that I would like to have it as well I am not using the recommended yarn I'm using Drops Air because that's something I had in stash in a white color and a charcoal and for the yoke, I used one ball of the charcoal and one ball of the white, and that got me to sleeve separation. My gauge is off. I think it should be 16 stitches. My gauge is closer to 18 stitches pre-blocking, but I could stretch it out. Um, but I like how it fits. I did another modification, um, two more modifications to the yoke. I did... Um, German short rows right after the ribbing because in this pattern the German short rows are 
done after the color work uh, in the back and across the sleeves and in the pattern photo it's quite a deep yoke and I do not enjoy that just because it's harder to wear with jackets it's less functional so I didn't want that deep of a yoke so in case um, I, w I was just thinking that I would end up with a deeper yoke and I'd probably stop the color work earlier. I would still like some higher fabric in the back, so I did German short rows early. That also shifted my beginning of round um, because I don't think it specifies until later where the beginning of round is and it's supposed to be between the, an arm and the back, but because I did the German short rows early on, my beginning of round was in the center back. So I just needed to play a little bit with uh, where to divide for sleeves later in the pattern. No biggie. Uh, another modification that I did is I think you do increases here and then you don't do decrease, do increases until you're further down here. And I was listening to, to Anna's podcast from further back, how the fabric was a bit bunched up on top. So she had split those increases and did half of them earlier on. So I did the same. I did half of the increases here. I did up here. Um, and then the second half I did where it was supposed to be. And that really fit really well for me. And because my gauge was off, once I had finished the color work, it hit really um, at a good point for me uh, for sleeve separation. It's not deep, it just has like just a little bit of fabric, which is what I wanted. So I decided to also do the um, the short rows underneath the color work in the back. So I have twice as many short rows um, than they're supposed to be in the pattern because I have on top and on the bottom, um, but because my gauge is off, I don't have that deep of a yoke. Uh, I did use the recommended needles. I think first I started the color work with 5.5 millimeter needles and then I saw that my gauge was off because I didn't gain so much. So I went up to the 6 millimeter needles for the color work which is what it's intended to be and like I said I can stretch it to gauge but as it is it is slightly smaller but it still fits really well. I picked the size that was recommended for my measurements. Um, so even though I now have less positive ease, it still looks really good. So there's that. I am using the five millimeters for the body. So six here and five here. And it looks very neat uh, gauge wise. One by one ribbing has a tendency to um, have a tighter gauge than like three by one color work for me just because catching floats then kind of helps me have a looser gauge but one by one ribbing really wants to cinch up not ribbing one by one color work sorry so um I have gotten to a point where I'm considering if I want to do the color work for the bottom now because I want it to be a little bit cropped. Uh, I might even have knitted too long for that. <laughs> but I'm going to try it on and see if I'm ready to do that or not. And I think that is all of the knitting that I have. I am so rusty. I almost forgot to show you some acquisitions because I do have some acquisitions to show you. It's been several weeks since I recorded and since then I received a parcel from The Knitting Swan, which I cannot praise her enough. She's a one woman business from the UK and she sews up the most high quality knitting bags and uh, I am now like an affiliate member of hers so if you use my coupon code which is my name Inga I-N-G-A then you get 10% off and I get like a little commission now so she sent me her new uh, her new um, what do you call it her new bags her new print uh, this is her big project bag 
and her new print are these roses so she draws these herself and creates the bags and this one fits so much i have cones and yarns and whips in here and i can take some out so you can see on the inside there are several pockets to put things in and there's the drawstring to close it up and I talked to her after her last um, collection is that the word I'm looking for that I really enjoy these project bags so much that I would like to be able to take them with me as like a purse so now she has added these little uh, tabs on the side so you can attach a strap if you'd like to which I'm going to do. I'm just looking for the perfect brown leather strap to put on it. She also sent me her, um, what what's the name of this kind of bag? Tote bag from this collection. And it has like a super cute frill on the bottom, very feminine. And again, uh, it has all those pockets on the inside to put measuring tapes, which I always need and always forget. <laughs> I should just have one in every project bag, really. So she sent me both of these and the quality is really great. And I use them already, as you can see, for my whips because they're just so pretty as well. So if you would like to get her bags, I'll put the, the link to her shop below. And I think she's also working on something exciting um, coming up. At least that's what she says she's working on. And I'm very excited to see what it is. Another whip that I got, which is currently holding my um, baby monitor, <laughs> is this beautiful yarn bowl from Prayer Bag Works. She sent me this beautiful yarn bowl with this cork material strap so she said that I could carry my the things that I need for Nelly from room to room which is what I am currently doing now at the cabin but eventually this will contain yarn and probably a sock whip. I have gotten some of these from her a few years ago not with the cork strap but with um like the little yarn bowl circular things I think she has a photo on it of it here if you can see like these little things and I have them out and about in my living room and use it every every week and uh, now I have these beautiful ones I am fascinated by how she creates these I find them so aesthetically beautiful and a great gift for someone and also I saw on her website they are very reasonably priced. So yes, that is all the acquisitions. I have not bought any yarn because I've also not had the time to buy any yarn, but I am really trying to appreciate what I have and use it all. And I've been going through all of my patterns and organizing them in my like uh, iCloud files. And I've been changing the names of the patterns to like their gauge first and then their patterns um, and putting it into like hats, sweaters, pants. So it's quite easy. I can go and see if I want to make a hat. I go into my hat folder and then it's arranged from like a small gauge to a larger gauge. So then I can see the yarn that I have picked out that I want to use and I can see, ah, it's going to be perfect for these two hats. Would I like to make one of them? And, um, I found that really inspiring going through all of my patterns and I've also been changing the um, like the first photo of the pattern to like a zoomed in one of the items so with my eyes it's easy to scroll through and actually see um, what the pattern looks like and it's bringing me a lot of inspiration so that has been really good and it's been feeding my uh, my need of of getting things is just going through the patterns and seeing what I have and making it easy to pick a yarn for my stash and then find a project that I would like to cast on. So I can recommend doing that if, um, if you would like to feed the acquisition hunger without actually getting anything new. 
so yeah that is all I have for today I will now need to go feed my baby and cuddles and um, maybe a hike in the snow we'll see I hope uh, that you are well and I hope that I will get to record again somewhat soon but you know life is busy and uh, it, maybe next time I can do a little session at the end where I talk about uh, the labor and my new life as a mom if anyone is interested in that. I work as a doctor in obstetrics and gynecology so I find it interesting when other people talk about it but um, I don't know. I could also just not talk about it. <laughs> Probably my knitting in the future is gonna be a good combination of knits for me because I love knitting things for myself and I love wearing my knits. It's also going to be some uh, things for the house just because I find things like these very functional and it adds a bit of interest to the household. So I might be making more accessories and I'll be making things for Nelly, both cute things but also practical things. So I'm probably going to be making more pants and more bibs because I find them useful. And I hope that you will stay with me on this little knitting journey and see how it all evolves. Uh, I am on Instagram as Knitting Traditions as well, and I do try to post there more regularly now since um, recording time is sparse. Um, but yeah, I hope that you're making all the things that make you happy and that you're well, and I hope to talk to you again soon. Bye!